I was always interested in the reactions of molecules and the mechanisms and the kinetics as a student. And I started doing photochemistry of organic molecules where you shone light on a heterocycle and it scrambled up all the atoms in the heterocycle. But basically, in the end, I found that I wasn't so good at making the molecules and doing the synthesis. So I got attracted into electrochemistry because it's much easier in electrochemistry to study kinetics and mechanism because the potential at the interface provides a driving force for the reaction and the current's a direct measurement of the rate at which the reaction is happening. And then if you attach things to the surface, you can build up your chemistry on the surface of the electrode and then study its mechanism and play around with its mechanism by altering the potential and altering the conditions. Electrochemistry is kind of all pervasive because it deals with transfer of charge at an interface, say between a solution and a metal, or between two solutions, or between a semiconductor and a polymer. So there are lots of situations where electrochemistry is important in our lives. Corrosion is an obvious example. So corrosion is an electrochemical process. You have a reduction of oxygen happening in one place and a dissolution and corrosion of the metal in another place, coupled together by a current that's flowing and ions that are moving in electrochemical reactions. But in practical terms, we use electrochemistry all the time, for example, in um, decorative coatings, in jewellery. Uh, think about silver-plated cutlery. Think about um, coatings that are put on with electrodeposition to prevent corrosion. So the enormous improvements that have been made in preventing corrosion of, of cars. So when I was a kid, cars were always rusting away really badly. Nowadays, it's much better. But that's all done by electrochemistry, essentially, electrocoating the car body as part of the manufacturing process to prevent the corrosion. Um, but it goes all the way through to things like the um, heart pacemaker. Heart pacemakers are based on batteries, and that's electrochemistry. Or um, glucose measurement for diabetics. Again, an electrochemical process is used that gives you that readout that tells the diabetic their blood glucose measurement, and therefore they can decide what they need to do in order to control their blood glucose. So it's all over the place. It's there in biology in terms of the reactions in human cells that generate energy in the mitochondria. Photochemistry and photoelectrochemistry happens in, in plant photosynthesis. They're essentially electrochemical processes at the heart of that, where charges are transferred across membranes and current flows within the cells. So it's all around us. And uh, I think ever since sort of the inception in 1800 of electrochemistry, pretty soon after that, people started to apply it by doing electroplating. Very soon after the first voltaic pile in 1800 was discovered, people were using it for technology. Uh, in my group, I've always been interested in two areas, essentially, um, in applying electrochemistry. One is electrochemistry of biological molecules and enzymes. So I did a lot of work over, over, the, over time on blood glucose sensors and looking at how to do electron transfer to enzymes. And that was really ties into trying to understand how to immobilize the enzyme on the electrode surface and how to exchange electrons between the electrode and the enzyme and then drive the reactions that the enzyme is catalyzing. So there's a lot of interesting challenges there because you understand the structure of the enzyme and you understand what it's supposed to be doing, but you've got to make the electrode interact with it. So it's got to behave rather like its natural biological partner, if you like. The other area that I've been very much involved in and currently have a lot of research going on is in making nanostructures, making small nanostructures using electrodeposition. So the great thing about electrochemistry in that context is it allows you to add atoms essentially one at a time to the surface to build up your structure. So that's a really powerful way of making very small structures for applications in uh, electronics or applications in sensing. And so I've been very interested in how to control those processes and to structure those processes, processes and how you might apply them. So at the moment, we're very interested in depositing um, P-block elements, things like germanium, tellurium, selenium, uh, antimony. Uh, these kind of elements make interesting compounds, which are very functional compounds that we use, for example, in memory devices, or we use in infrared detectors, or we maybe can make thermoelectric devices that convert heat into electrochemistry, into electricity. So those are the, my two main sort of areas of research at the moment. 
I mean, looking forward, we have a, an enormous problem about energy and how we can manage energy. And so electrochemistry is really central in what we can do there. So if you move to having, um, having renewable energy sources, then you need energy storage. And energy storage, one of the most obvious ways to store energy is in batteries. And batteries are all around us. We use batteries all the time. But we need to improve batteries. We need to make better batteries. We need to make batteries which work well in automotive vehicles, for example. And there's an enormous amount of research and money going into research internationally in that area and also in the UK. But also it's important for us to use electricity as a way of making chemicals. So uh, right now we make a lot of chlorine is made electrochemically and chlorine is a major feedstock. But going to a, a world where we're electrifying things and where we're using renewables, we need to think of ways in which we can use electrochemistry to carry out chemical transformations maybe start making our feedstocks in that way, rather than relying on oil or things which produce a lot of carbon, a lot of CO2. So I think there are a lot of important challenges going forward. There are challenges in applying electrochemistry and sensing. So blood glucose sensors exist, but taking that to the next level, taking that to sensing for molecular diagnostic applications, for DNA, a lot of work is going on in that area. So I think there are lots of opportunities in terms of electrochemistry and the ways that it can apply and be applied to help us with real problems in, in the environment, but also problems in water, water treatment, problems in health, Medicare, and, uh, and other areas.